didn't know you came in. Oh, wow. How you doing? Welcome to my uh, makeshift studio. You just caught me in the middle of writing a, a great worship song. Possibly a hit. No, I'm just joking. I just, you guys know I just added that. I'm just trying to do something different, all right? So please bear with me. Show me some grace. Try to do something different. Well, let's get into to the devotion. Monday, we focused on hope. You know, uh, where are we placing our hope? There are those who misplace their hope in, in God and Jesus Christ. Today, we're focusing on the peace of God. Um, but we're going to be looking at it as uh, through the view of persevering in troubled times. And we'll be in the book of uh, John, chapter 16, verses 31 through 33. But I want to open up with this, this little story real quick. When I was younger, a teenager, got in a lot of trouble. And I believe we all did. I got in a lot of trouble. Okay, I did some things I shouldn't have done. But in the small town I grew up in, there wasn't a whole lot to do. Um, the small town, we had a drive-in theater, an old bowling alley. We had a military base. Um, there wasn't much to do outside of, you know, drinking, doing drugs, um, chasing lizards, um, or even fighting with some local Marines. There wasn't a whole lot to do. So there were times, two of my friends and myself, we'd hop in my truck and we'd go to the local junior high school on the outskirts of town. Um, there's not really a whole lot out there. And um, of course, it's trespassing if you go over there, but we like to do it because there are times this the local uh, police officer, which we only had a few of them, would go over there and he'd try to catch us. He wouldn't hop the fence, you know, but he would drive around the perimeter trying to catch us, but we'd always get away, always get away. I'd, I'd find a place to park my truck that is hidden. He wouldn't see it. We'd be able to get in there and out. He wouldn't catch us. So this time we're like, let's go to the school, but let's go to the football field. And what I mean by that is our high school football field or stadium wasn't actually on the high school premises. It was on the end of town on the property of this junior high school. So you'd hop the fence, go through the school, you know, walk up through this big open lot of desert, and then you hop this other big fence to get on football field. So that was our goal, just to get there, not cause trouble, but just to lay in the middle of the grass, full moon, look at the stars in the sky, and just hang out. But we did make a pact that if the police officer showed up, that we would outrun them again. We would go this way instead of the other way, and we'd be able to get away. Well, as I'm laying back, this big spotlight just hits me. And I get up, I look back, and it's a police officer. I'm like, oh my gosh, guys, he's here. You guys ready? You guys ready to run? I look, and they're gone. My two friends are gone. I can still see the one. I can see his, his shoes and his feet running on the distance to the left. The other one was gone. He, my homies left me. They left me hanging. So by that pot point, I'm like, I can't, I can't get away. I didn't have a head start. The, the spotlight's on me. I'm going to get caught. So I might as well take one for the team. So I go over, hop over the huge fence, go to the officer, put my hands like this. And he starts laughing and laughing. And as he's laughing, he puts his hand on my shoulder and said, man, are those guys your close friends? And I'm like, yeah, or at least I thought so. And he's like, they left you hanging. They left you and they did. They actually saw him. They saw his car pull before anything. And that's when they got up. By the time they got up, I just saw the spotlight get on me. I looked back, so they had a head start. So he tells me, police officer says, okay, get in the car. So I walk over to the back because I figure he's gonna handcuff me and put me in there. He goes, now get in the front seat. I'm like, in the front seat? He goes, yeah, today's your lucky day, get in. So I get in the car and he's like, where's your vehicle at? So I'm like, man, this whole time he knew we had a vehicle. We always thought that he thought we were just some young punks that were walking. So he knew what was going on. So he drove me to my, my truck, let me out, said, you know what? Have a great weekend. I'll catch you next time. <laughs> you know, and um, which we never did that again. But honestly, that scared me because I was in the cop car right then. But this reminds me of what we're going to be talking about today in the book of John, where Jesus himself experienced his close friends, his disciples scattered about on a whole nother level, nothing compared to what, what I'm talking about. But it's important for us to understand that our relationship and our commitment to Jesus Christ doesn't promise us that we won't face any, any trials, that we won't face any conflicts while we're alive on this earth. He does promise us to, that he will be with us, he will walk with us, and he will strengthen us. So let's get into the, the Bible. I'm going to start in verse 31. Jesus answered them, do you now believe? And I want to stop there because right here, Jesus is not questioning their belief in him. No way is he saying that their belief and faith is weak. No, 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 no. What he's saying here, he's like, do you now believe, okay? Do you now believe? Because the disciples were kind of prideful and boastful. They believed that their faith in Christ was so strong that nothing could ever shake them and nothing can ever be removed. So he was just checking with them on this, okay? So Jesus' question of do you now believe was suggesting to them that they were going to soon meet and face some kind of trial, something that was going to test their faith in God. This commentary states it this way. It is as if Jesus said... You believe me now while I am with you and all things go according to your mind. But what will you do when I am taken from you and be apprehended by my enemies, beaten, scorched, crucified, killed, and laid in my grave? Will you still believe that? That's pretty strong. Let's go into verse 32. 
Indeed, the hour is coming. Yes, has now come. That you will be scattered. There's that word scattered. Each to his own and will leave me alone. And yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. So here, verse 32, Jesus already knew that Judas was going to betray him. Peter was going to deny him and that all his friends, you know, his disciples were just going to forsake him and leave him all alone. But he wouldn't be alone. They were going to be alone and they were going to leave him and scatter out of fear, you know, out of um, a doubt, out of despair, and out of, out of being hopeless. But here Jesus is saying, I will not be alone because my father is with me. And the reason he said this is because of this. Jesus himself was confident in his father's promise, okay, in his promise to op- uphold him and assist him. Okay, in his human nature during this horrible trial that he was going to experience. Okay, we too have that promise that God will uphold us through what we're going through. He will uphold it, my friends, and we just need to have that peace and, and remember that. Now, the reason I'm sharing these scriptures is, you know, not just to remind us of the what Christ went through before the crucifixion, but it's this pandemic has led many to be scattered. You know, everyone's scattered to their own homes. We're, we're not even meeting physically at church and just the list goes on. You know what I'm talking about. But the scary thing about it is that many have been scattered, not out just into their homes, but many are scattering from their faith. Many are scattering and running away because uh, they, they're they doubting God. They're having a hard time believing God. Their faith is being weakened, you know. Um, it's just it's just a diff- difficult time. Many that I've talked to, their faith is totally just dwindling, dwindling. That light is just burning out. And there are those that have asked me in these past few weeks, you know, where is God in all this? Why is God allowing this to happen? Why won't God come in and just and just stop all this, you know? Why doesn't he do that? I'm losing my hope. And that is so sad. But let's go to this. That hope has a lot to do with our peace. Verse 33 says, These things I have spoken to you, that in me, okay, you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. Hmm. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Here he's telling them that he's going to overcome the world. But the disciples didn't know that in three days Christ was going to resurrect. They had no clue. But here he's reminding them, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world, which he did in three days. He overcame the world. He gave us a promise. He gave us eternal life. He gave us so much. Now, God promises us, promises us a peace, okay, which will coexist um, with trials that we go through and any disturbances, any, any struggles we go through, okay? A peace that will carry us through all the conflicts, all the challenges, all the storms, even diseases, you know, and challenges that, that we will face in our lives. Let's look at trees, for example. And I'll use the oak trees in Tatchby where I used to live. They're beautiful trees. Those things are solid and huge. If you look at them, those things are firmly planted and rooted in the soil. They're strong. And even though the storms come in and up there, you get the winds are powerful up there. Uh, the rains are powerful. It snows. You get all four seasons up there. But even with the storms, branches will be thrown off and broken off. The leaves will be scattered. But at the end, you'll see that that tree is still firmly planted and standing. And even though it lost stuff, it gains that stuff back. It is all brought back. It grows back. And even grows back stronger and even more beautiful than it was in the first place. And that's the same thing with us in our walk with God. You know, when we stand firm in God, we'll have that peace of God. Even though those storms and trials and this pandemic we're going through, we're going to face it. We're still at the end of the day and at the end of all this are going to stand firm. We may have lost our jobs, may have lost finances, may have lost this and that. But you know what? We're going to gain it all back. God's going to give it all back to us. And we're going to be stronger and, and more powerful than ever, my friends. And that's what perseverance is. That's why perseverance is so important. But we can't persevere without the peace of our amazing God. Now, the world may give us excitement, may give us joy, uh, may give us uh, happiness, but all that stuff is temporary, okay? Only one thing will give us everlasting peace, and that is Jesus Christ himself, okay? You know, and... <laughs> We will only find our peace nowhere else but where Mary found the empty tomb of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That right there is where peace starts. The resurrection of Jesus Christ, the power of God raising Christ from the dead, okay? Taking him off that cross and out of that grave and then back into life, my friends. That right there should start where our peace should be. Give us that hope that we're talking about Monday, but that hope will turn into that peace, that peace that transcends all understanding, that surpasses all understanding, which is the peace of God. Not the peace of the world, but the peace of God, okay? Now, if you remember the opening story about, you know, the police officer and helping me out and my friends bailing and I bailed on them, remember that, I bailed on them. I just stick around. In this case, we see that Jesus didn't bail on them. He came back for them. 
He came back for his disciples, you know. He came back for those who scattered and left him alone. He returned and loved on them. You know, he ate with them. He hung out with them. And because of these actions, their belief and their faith and their hope were strengthened even more, giving him that peace of God. I pray that this, this gives you a little bit more insight on God's peace, but I also want to challenge you, man. I want to challenge you. Are you persevering through this? Are you struggling to have that peace of God? Are you struggling to be that strong tree that's rooted? Man, if you are, seek God. Pray. Call me. Call Pastor David. Call somebody that can, that can encourage you, that can counsel you, and just get you in that right direction because the power of God is real, my friends. The power of God is so real. His peace is real. His provision is real. He's amazing. And you know what? Like he said here to his disciples, I will overcome. Be a good cheer. He will overcome. He overcame the grave, my friends. He will overcome this pandemic that this world's going through. All right? Love you guys, and we'll talk to you guys later. All right? God bless. Bye.